Welcome to the third season of the award-winning series Above and Beyond. My name is Valerie Fite and I am the Enrichment Coordinator for the Rhineck District. Above and Beyond is your opportunity to meet some of the upcoming young people in our community who will one day be leaders. Today's guests are Elena Ria Gomez and James Quigley. Elena, an 11th grade student, is on the high honor roll and a member of the National Honor Society. She's clerk of the International Thespian Society and the co-vice president of the a cappella club. Elena speaks Spanish fluently and this is her third year as a lead in the Rhineck High School musical. James, a 12th grade student, is also on the high honor roll and a member of the National Honor Society. He is a member of the International Thespian Society and is the other co-vice president of the a cappella club. James is in the Rhineck High School Chorus and he plays bass and this is his first year as a lead in the high school musical. So welcome both of you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Uh, you're welcome, it's exciting. Um, you're both in Singing in the Rain right. and the directors are, and tell us who the directors are and the musical director and so on. Well, um, Stephen Loftus and Trish Aronson co-direct and Steve Loftus is the musical director while Trish is choreographer. Okay, and the department is run by um, Patrick Artiger. Yes. Right. Okay. So let's start with you, Elena. How did you become a performer? Well, uh, ever since I was a little girl, um, I'd visit uh, the Rhinoc Theater Department and I'd see, uh, I'd go to watch all of the musicals and it was like watching a Broadway show. It was incredible, so I knew that I wanted to be a part of that. So. Um, from middle school, I, I was a part of the middle school plays, and then once I entered high school, I started doing that. So all of the training has been right at right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and what about you, James? Well, I knew I wanted to be on stage this year because last year I was assistant lighting designer for the musical, and I would find myself singing along to the songs and, and, and mouthing the lines when the actors were on stage and I just knew there was something I wanted to do and the department was going through a lot of changes in the infrastructure and, and it seemed like a good opportunity for me and my last opportunity as a senior to be part of it so I knew that I should try out an audition. Had you, you'd never thought about performing? Were you in the booth singing along? And Yeah, I, I don't know why. I, uh, 10th grade, I knew that I wanted to do stage crew and lighting crew and and it didn't really um, like sink in that that I really wanted to be in the show. And and then the next year we're doing Beauty and the Beast, and and just slowly more and more I I, I had a craving to be to be on stage instead of you know, backstage. So you've got the perspective from the tech side, and then over the right. to the other side, and you know behind the footlights or in front of the footlights. I don't know where <laughs> which yeah. one that is. Um, but have you ever been on the technical side, or are you entirely on the front? I think completely um, on the performing side. But um, however, I was in one of my theater classes uh, during school. I did. Uh, I worked the sound, the microphones, and. I was in the in the booth where James used to be, and I saw how crazy and how stressful it was, and how chaotic it was back there, because you're working to make the performers look so so great and amazing. And if 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 you mess up with the sound, you know it's it's on it's on them, it's on the sound technicians. So I gained a lot of respect for that, and it's crazy being you know involved with with both sides, you know. That I'm sure really instructive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you are both uh, musical theater performers, which means that you're triple threats. And for audience members who don't know, that's dance and also singing and acting. So you have to be able to do all of them. I want to start with dance okay. um, because I think that might be the um, area you have the least experience with. Yes. Um, have you ever danced before? No, I had never danced before the show. I had no experience. And now you're tapping. Right, yeah, we're doing tap dancing, and it is, has been really challenging, but it's so much fun. I think we both love it a lot. Yeah. How did you uh, learn to tap dance? Well, before auditions, they had um, classes that you could go to just to get, you know, wade into the water a little bit of, of tap dancing and what you're going to see mm -hmm. when you're in the show. So I, I went to as many of those as I could, and that it was so foreign, and everybody was struggling. <laughs> like nobody except one person in our cast had had tap danced beforehand and it was just <laughs> you should have seen you know just all these people struggling and and 
I mean, the, the improvements that we've made are just astronomical. Yeah. What was the hardest part for you? With the dancing, in regards to dancing, mm -hmm. it's so such a foreign way to use your feet in tap dancing. You don't stand like this. You don't walk like this normally. It's it's just different. It, it's just weird ways to, to move your feet. That was challenging <laughs> for me. That's a good definition of yeah. dance. Weird yeah, ways weird. To dance. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Have you ever tapped or um, danced? or? I have a very small background in dancing. Uh, I danced when I was a, a little girl, but I had never tapped before. And like James said, uh, at the beginning, our very first day of tapping was uh, pretty, is funny almost. Um, but I think, you know, slowly but surely, we, we all got just completely just improved so much. And I think the hardest part for me is memorizing the steps and knowing, you know, what foot to do what and what comes next right. and, and having it all flow together and making it look like it's easy and fun. Did you have to both practice um, a lot? I mean, outside of the classes and rehearsals? Oh, and yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is an understatement a lot. Yes. Just so much. Or, you know, if you don't, you, you're just not going to get it because we're trying to make it look like these people have been tap dancing, like they're expert oh, dancers. Oh, and we've been doing it since October. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to look like expert dancers. So a so lot of practice. A lot of practice. Um, is it hard not to look at your feet? I mean, is that a difficult thing? How do you get your eyes up? Well, at first, it's just a lot of yelling from Trish, <laughs> our choreographer, yes. like, look up, stop staring at your stop feet. <laughs> you just need to be really cognizant <clears throat> of your body position. And and it's hard to just not look at your feet because you, you, you're focusing so much on wanting to do the right steps and to just bring it up and make it look effortless is hard. It's a real challenge. What about your arms? I mean, I've, sometimes people when they're dancing don't know what to do with their hands. How do you work that um, out? I think at first we had no, you know, we were not aware of our arms yeah. or our face or anything besides our feet because we just, we needed to see what it looked mm -hmm. like and if we were doing it right. But then, um, you know, once we got the steps down, we had to look up, put a smile on our face, you know, have our hands very light and 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 make it feel like it's it's all flowing <clears throat> and it's just coming naturally. So I think there's no specific movements with our hands. However, we we need to something needs to happen. We need to just kind of move naturally and make it seem fun and effortless. I'm sure you you've managed to do that. The second part is singing. Had you ever sung in public when you started the show? I had never sung in a more like professional sense. I'd never had lessons or anything, but I like to sing because I love me like all different kinds of music, and I would sing you know for myself. And in high school, I started to surround myself and be drawn to people who were really musical and lots of which, you know, were musical in singing. And I would try to emulate those people who were my, you know, idols, like, and they were just my friends who were so talented and I would, I would be around them and, and try to see how, what they did and, and practice their techniques and their sounds. And, and um, I really, this year, have tried more seriously to hone in those skills and you know, practice that, the craft of singing instead of just for fun. What about you? Do you um, well, I think uh, since middle school, I joined, I was in chorus all throughout middle school and all throughout high school, so I think that helped me a lot. And then, but bringing that to stage, however, it was a completely different uh, way of singing. But just being a part of that, being a part of the theater department for so long, I think it, it really helped me, you know, to to explore and find my my strengths in, in regarding you know, singing. Well, I admire you both. Uh, I can't even sing happy birthday even <laughs> when I try. So um, is it difficult to be in front of an audience singing? I mean, a lot of people sort of can sing. You sing in chorus. Is it very right. different being a soloist? It, it is. It is different. Choral singing is definitely very, very different from, from what we're doing. But the audience thing, for me, doing something in front of an audience is a skill that you can you can learn no matter what you're doing in front of that audience. So so it always helped me when I would play in, in band, in the high school band, and we'd have audiences. And at first, even that, that would make me nervous. 
and and practicing that has made me better in front of audiences and and even as a freshman everybody has to take public speaking at mm -hmm. Rynek <laughs> even that I mean most people I don't I mean me I thought that was a really really helpful class and because at the start I couldn't I couldn't talk in front of people and then by the end it, it was it was easy so I think all like lots of different things that I've had to do in front of audiences have helped me and now I don't feel too nervous I'm glad to hear that the public speaking fed yeah, into this. Yeah, it, it really did. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how about your, you uh, in front of an audience? I mean, you've played the lead now. This is your third year. Um, well, um, I still get extremely nervous uh, every, <laughs> every time I go on stage. Not so much at, at rehearsals because, you know, everyone's with you. Everyone shares that, that, those nerves and, and, and wants to, you know, do so well just, just like you do. So, um, but in front of an audience, you know, it's, they're all... They have. They are forced to look at what is going on, and right. if, if it's you singing a solo and just you <laughs> looking at the audience singing to them, yeah. it's it's very nerve wracking. But you want it. You just you want to give them so much. You know, you want to give them your all, and you want to make it perfect. So those nerves help a lot to to give to to give out the emotions that that you're trying to feed them. How do you manage to learn? so many songs. How do you learn a song, James? For the lyrics, it's just a matter of repetition. And, you know, you do, you, you do it so many times that it just becomes second nature. And the, the songs themselves require a lot, a lot of practice. Just knowing, knowing the form of the song, knowing, you know, what pitches are where, and being aware of which parts mm -hmm. are the most difficult for you so that you can really work on those because, because it's hard to work on every song you have to do in, in, its, in its entirety. So, so if, when you know like the hardest parts, what you really struggle with, that's good to, to practice just that. Okay, and same for you. Uh, I agree. I think um, by the by the end of the whole process, you it really is second nature. You just it just comes out so naturally, but. I think for me, really doing it over and over again and practicing and really being very, very, um, very strict with how um, you, you approach it and, and making sure you do everything right and repeating that. And you just the, the more practice, the better, you know, the natural, it comes out naturally. Did both of you use the famous movie uh, singing in the rain as a um, litmus, essentially, or a guide. I mean, did you listen to and watch Definitely. over and over? Yes. Is that intimidating? Yes. Yes. It's helpful, but it's very intimidating because you're watching this just professional, just classic movie, and you are trying to do exactly that. You know, you're trying to to do to be them and and do what they are doing, and it, it's really intimidating, but I hope that that is just going to only help me um, be all that I can be and, and um, have more energy and be inspired. But I've, I've seen the movie so many times. I never, I'd never, I'd heard of the term like singing in the rain, but I didn't, I didn't even know it was a musical and I didn't know like Gene Kelly and Debbie Reynolds, Donald O'Connor. And now I am such a huge fan. I've seen it so many times and I love it. <laughs> You must see more and more detail and craft yes. as mm -hmm. it goes definitely. on. Definitely. So, what about you? Did you use the movie as a guide? Yes, definitely. Before uh, auditions, like like James said, I hadn't really, I had never seen the movie. I didn't know who Gene Kelly or yeah, Debbie Reynolds. Like um, I didn't know who they were, but I saw the movie, and then I said, "I want to be Kathy. <laughs> I, that is, what I'm going to strive to 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 give that off." So, um, so definitely, it was very intimidating because these are these classic characters and legendary um, actors that you know when when people when the audience comes they're gonna think oh Gene Kelly and Debbie Reynolds mm -hmm. however um, we hope that they can you know tune that out for the night and just think wow look at James as Don Lockwood and Elena as Kathy. I'm sure I'm sure that's you know a, a point of transcendence mm -hmm. that audience members are happy to make that mm -hmm. transition. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, now we've only discussed uh, singing and dancing, but the real core is that you've got to hold a character. Right. So let's talk about the acting process. Um, your character, can you just tell me a little bit, James, like the character's name and the context right. of the story? Well, his name is Don Lockwood. I'd say he's he's in his late twenties. He is a 
a silent movie star in Hollywood right around the time that um, talking pictures come out and the the real struggle in this musical is is his and everybody's uh, transformation from from silent movies to, to talking movies and and it's not without its you know own problems and and discourse because of that but he makes it yeah he in the it. end not to give it away but <laughs> it's a pretty happy story. <laughs> okay. And what about your character? Uh, I play Kathy Selden, who is a, she's a chorus girl. <clears throat> she's a, just a dancer kind of in the background who is, uh, she wants to be an actress on the stage. And she kind of uh, is above the whole uh, movie star, silent movies. And she doesn't like the, the, the film aspect. She wants to be a, a stage actress. However, she... She pretends to be above all that, but um, she does end up falling for the whole Don Lockwood charm. And mm -hmm. but they end up being a team and working together to be successful. And in this process, um, because she's not falling all over Don, uh, he takes notice of her. Is yes. that the idea? And chases yeah, her until absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really thrown back from the idea that somebody isn't all yeah. over him and just instantly in love with him, and 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 even doesn't respect his work, you know? He, he's so used to being pampered and just, <laughs> you're so good, you're so talented.